Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 61 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Alrighty, today we have another video from our friend and contributor, Mike the Bloody Red Baron. 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 Okay, cool it, ladies. All right, today Mike is going to share with us some of the knives that he has collected over the years, and I've got to say they're uh, they're pretty impressive. All righty, without further ado, here uh, here is the video. Here's Mike. Good morning, folks. Most men have a knife. A gentleman always carries a pocket knife. Uh, and, and a lot of men that I know collect knives. They don't do it deliberately. It's just knives find their way into their lives. Uh, Bo Smith, I'm talking to you. Uh, I have accumulated a huge pile of knives over the years. One of my earliest possessions, which I still have, is a Boy Scout pocket knife. I'm very proud of it. Uh, but this is about three unusual knives that I have. Uh, two of them which were given to me. Uh, the first one is Sting. This is Frodo's sword from Lord of the Rings. And my lovely wife Anne purchased this at a garage sale for 20 bucks. at this knife and I handle it, uh, I am in awe of the craftsmanship and workmanship because there was no knife back in the Middle Ages that can compare to this for sure quality. It's made of the finest stainless steel. It's full tang. It's, uh, it's perfectly balanced. It's sharper than hell. It's got these elvish runes on the side. It feels right in the hand. Uh, it's about the side of, size of a Roman gladius. Now, uh, I have no intention of running out into the yard and fighting an orc. I wouldn't even know where to find an orc. Uh, but if you must fight an orc, this is the sword to have. The second knife is a kukri from Nepal. It's the traditional knife of the Gurkha. And this was given to me by my nephew Kyle, who just got done serving three years in the Peace Corps in Nepal. He brought this back for me. Uh, the sheath is made from wood. This is a huge chunk of steel. If you look at the side here, you see that it's full tang. Uh, it's not as sophisticated as uh, Sting, the Lord of the Rings sword, which was manufactured with state-of-the-art material in China. This was obviously manufactured in a very home-built kind of forge in Nepal, but it's made from a single slab of steel, as you can see. Look at the thickness of the blade. It's very heavy. Uh, you've heard tales of that Gurkha who fought off 22 attackers on a train using his uh, kukri. Uh, it, the kukri always comes with two tiny little knives. I never understood that. The, the two little knives fit in these holes here. Uh, I took them out and threw them away until my friend Chris came over and started to research them and found out that one of the little knives is to keep the big knife sharp and the other one is for skinning small games. So I retrieved them from the trash can. I do have them. They need to be sanded off. This is not stainless steel, and when it came, it was covered with rust. If you are dealing with rust on a blade, you use a fine, wet sandpaper to remove it. Again, I have no intention of running out and attaching any orcs with this. It's just a beautiful weapon or a tool. It's heavy enough to chop through branches. Finally, we have the, the balisson. This used to be ubiquitous in the knife world, especially during the 80s. I don't know what happened to them. A number of municipalities have outlawed them. Uh, it's a Far East weapon. It's also called a butterfly knife for obvious reasons. 
and it's an excellent knife to carry in your pocket because you can pack a lot of blade in a small space. I have a lot more knives, but I've bored you enough with this material as is, so thank you for listening. All right, thanks. We'll have more videos later this week. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. As always, that music means that it is time for Hogs Headlines, all the news that Doc Hogg wants to report on. Dateline, future Darwin Award winner. The other day, a woman hopped the enclosure at the lion's den at the Bronx Zoo. Here is a bit of the video. Alas, she got away from both the lion and the authorities. The woman has been identified as Maya Autry, and the police want to bring her in on trespassing charges. Apparently in response to that, uh, Miss Autry, who goes by the moniker Queen Empress Maya Lurie on her Instagram page, posted a video of herself rapping. Uh, here is here is some of that video. They take more than one ISIS to defeat me. I am 15 Cleopatra's, believe me. I am H in the slaves. Pick a n all that in no days this is. I am coming with the flesh. I take your AIDS, take your prison, take your D. I am H. Girls, come in a good place. Welcome for me. Welcome for food. That's well, I, Doc Hogg, am here not to complain about Miss Autry, but to scold that lion, who was supposed to do a solid for the rest of the human race that day by, you know, really helping us cleanse the gene pool. Bad lion. Very, very bad. Alrighty, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day.